Hey, it's Jade bringing you another one of the current virtual sessions. And today we are joined by New York up and comer Samia. And Samia, thank you so much for making the time to come and chat with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, so we we have some uh, musical performances that you recorded earlier that we're going to be playing a little bit later. Uh, but you do have this new album that's out. It's called The Baby. And uh, you've released a couple of singles already uh, prior to this album. But I always feel like that debut album, it's a lot of pressure to kind of show your entire self and, you know, who you are. Uh, so how did you, how do you decide to approach, uh, this album, this collection of songs? This is the first collection of songs or project that I've written for, with a thesis in mind. Um, this is the first thing that I've written, uh, super intentionally for, um, and, and had an understanding of what I was trying to say. So I think it's the most fun ending writing process has been for me and, um, I think before I started working on this album, I was just like spewing content that I had been sitting on for a long time because I just wanted to get it out there and I wanted to have uh, something to say for myself. And so, um, yeah, I think this is this is the only way I'm going to want to do it from now on just because it was so fulfilling. So so what was the thesis that you were working on for this? It started with like just a general fear of being alone um, and then. I sort of learned with hindsight, um, like re reflecting on what I'd written, that it was more about accepting that I need people and that it's okay to not want to be alone and that um, there's less shame in that than, than maybe I thought. Um, and there's something really beautiful about having a community of people who you can, who you can rely on. Yeah, the idea of being alone and loneliness, I think that's popped up a lot lately, especially with the quarantine and, you know, a, a lot of our connections is, you know, like this. Uh, as somebody who is, yeah, you just said that being alone is kind of terrifying for you. How have you been doing with all of all of this? Uh, not, not super well, emotionally. <laughs> um, yeah. I've learned so much i've learned so much about what i'm capable of um that i can survive being by myself um that you know i just i love my friends and i love the people that i, I just feel really lucky to have the people in my life that i do and so it was it was certainly a painful adjustment to not have that community so accessible to me uh but it's just it was nice to know that i i, I wouldn't you know die <laughs> If I had, if I didn't have access to it, <laughs> I know facing your fears. That's a, yeah. that's a, yeah. Who that is pretty tough. Um, well, we're gonna listen to some of your songs here, and uh, one of the first ones is uh, a song that I relate to a lot because you know the album's titled "The Baby." I'm the baby in my family, and really for for yeah, yeah. So for me and my family, I was like the peacemaker. And kind of the like, let's all get along sort of person. And I think that falls onto the youngest a lot. And so I, I was wondering about this song, Big Wheel, because it, it feels like it kind of deals with some of that, like, just trying to keep the peace, you know, not saying the things that maybe you should in the moment. Uh, so are, are you the baby? And do you kind of feel uh, that presence in the family lima lineup? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, the baby came from never wanting my friends to and family to leave a room. So I would say, who's going to watch the baby every time they tried to leave? And I was the baby in that context. Um, and I, yeah, that song came from a fear of confrontation and just always wanting everything to be okay and wanting to be able to enjoy every moment with the people I love. And so uh, sacrificing a lot of the things that would probably be beneficial to say to those people um for the sake of like peace in that moment so that was that was the only way i could sort of let those feelings out was in was in the in the space of that song well let's check it out we'll chat some more in a moment but let's listen to big wheel this is from the new album the baby it's samia with a virtual session here on the current <laughs> Yeah. 
bug bites on my legs. I got two friends who look alike. I got coffee in the morning and my mama in the night. And I got bad news, but I didn't fight. I got bad news, but I didn't fight. I got a big wheel in Montana, and he told me yesterday that a year ago he looked me.
And that right there was Does Not Heal. And this is a live virtual session with Samia. Uh, Samia, thank you so much for joining us. Do you feel, because so much of your music is uh, very vulnerable, uh, do you feel like there are any misconceptions that people have about you because of the songs that you've released? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I've gotten um, what you write is so empowering and so brave. I think people have, and I'm I'm so grateful for that interpretation and that anyone resonates with the music in that way or feels empowered by what I'm saying. Um, I just never feel, it never comes from a place of empowerment to me. So I'm always kind of shocked hearing that um, in a good way. Just like, I'm glad that it, it came across that way because it only ever comes from fear and desperation <laughs> for me. Um, so I guess, yeah, that's a really good, a really positive misinterpretation of, of what I'm writing. Yeah. I mean, especially like validation, right? Because if you're writing songs where it's, you know, these are my fears and having people see it and uh, get strength from that. What a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah best case uh, scenario. <laughs> entirely. The, when you were growing up, I know you, you're in New York, you're, you know, surrounded by um, artists in, in your family and life in general, but was there an artist in particular that stands out that you saw performing live and you said, that's what I should be doing? Um, yes. <laughs> I, in high school, growing up, I was obsessed with this band Kitten and particularly their front woman, Chloe Chidas, who is a friend of mine now because I forced her to be because I was obsessed with her. Um, but <laughs> she, she's just the best. She's just the greatest performer I've still to this day I've ever seen. And it's because of how genuinely passionate she is and she's exciting to watch and she's all over the place um because you can tell that she means it and uh she's like just so naturally and honestly expressing herself so i uh, yeah the first time i saw them live i was like i will do anything i can to either know that person or do that thing <laughs> like either one will be fine yeah and this has kind of put a hold on the live show experience uh but do you do you enjoy bringing these songs to to the live show i know it, it can be kind of tricky when you have songs that are really uh personal and, and sharing them uh with a with a crowd but is that part of the the music making that you enjoy yeah i mean that's the that's the best part of the whole thing for me that's really why i wanted to start doing it and that was my first experience i had with music was just you know gigging as much as i could and trying to be play in as many bands as i could so it it's been difficult for me to find things um within this career path that i enjoy as much as the performing aspect um so it's been like a good exercise in that kind of discovery but i i really miss it so much if you could be back on any stage right now which stage would it be is there a certain venue that kind of holds a certain special spot in your heart um I think Rough Trade in Brooklyn was a really formative space for me. And when I, you know, I would just love to be able to go back there and play one show or, or somewhere like Bowery Ballroom in New York, just places that I grew up going to um, that I was excited to to uh, play this album at. But someday, hopefully. Someday soon. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. I, I believe someday soon we'll be we'll be there again. And I have to do this because, you know, we're a radio station in Minnesota and we love a local angle on anything. And, you know, you you were on tour with Hippocampus and there's uh, on some of the songs or perhaps all the songs, uh, you have some production help from Jake and Nate from Hippocampus. Uh, so I want to say, have you a have you ever been to Minnesota? What are your thoughts about Minnesota? And uh, let us know how you and the, the band got together, how they ended up being a part of your album. Yeah, I mean, I tracked the whole thing with them and they produced it. They, um, they, we met on tour, I opened for them on tour and we very quickly became close friends. And um, it was just so easy um, to work with them. And I felt so, it was just a 
a space that was conducive to honesty for me and like creativity and they they really like helped me figure out what I wanted to say so I yeah I made the record in Minneapolis with them um and yeah so I've spent a lot of time where were were you in Minneapolis oh god that's a hard question (laughs) Minneapolis (laughs) We can we can circle back to that later. Do you do you remember anything about Minneapolis? Any restaurants? Any anything that uh, that sticks out? I'm trying to remember. Okay, so the studio is here, and then there was a coffee shop and a pizza place across the street, and that's it. That's what my that's the only thing that my mind can. Yeah, I got. I know exactly where you're talking about. I picture it in my mind. Pizza place, Great. coffee shop. You guys know what she's talking about as well. You know, don't lie. Uh, well, thank you so much for for coming to Minnesota. And uh, I hope we can welcome you back sometime soon. And we're going to listen to one more song here. This one is called Fit and Full. It's Samia for a live current session. One, two, three. And that one is called Fit and Full. This is another one of our current virtual sessions with Samia. And Samia, thank you so much for joining us and for bringing us these gorgeous renditions, uh, live versions of your songs. And where, just out of curiosity, where did you record these for us? I recorded those at, um, at Red Convertible Studios in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Yeah, the lighting is very moody. I loved it. Uh, well, thank, yeah, thanks. thank I love you. it there. 
<laughs> yes, and uh, thank you so much. And like I said, we are uh, so happy to welcome you back anytime uh, when we can all travel freely and you can be in Minnesota again. We'll go to that pizza place next to the coffee shop nice and coffee have shop. a nice time. Uh, so thank you thank again. You. And Sammy has a new album. It's called The Baby. It is out now. So you can pick it up if you were enjoying that. And uh, thank you also to our technical producers, Jesse and Derek. And thank you to our technical engineer, Peter. And thanks to you for watching and joining us for another current virtual session. And keep your eyes out for the next one at thecurrent.org.